Hey everybody, welcome to Mammoth Interactive's YouTube channel. First of all, I want to thank you for watching this video. And remember that this channel doesn't do Patreon, instead we sell our digital courses down below. And every single dollar that we get from the products you buy below goes into making more content. The best way to help out this channel and Mammoth Interactive is to subscribe to Mammoth Interactive's huge library of content. Get thousands of hours and hundreds of courses for a low, low price down below. We have a monthly option and a yearly option. Thanks for listening and I'll see you in the video. For the first lesson in our series, we're going to have a look at the different parts of the electric guitar. The electric guitar consists of two main parts, the neck and the body of the guitar. The neck of the guitar is made out of the headstock, which its role is to hold the tuning keys. The tuning keys serve to tune the individual strings of the guitar. There is one individual tuning key for every string. And by tightening or loosening the tuning key, you get a different pitch out of each of the electric guitar strings. Moving on to the fretboard. The fretboard consists of different types of wood, depending on the brand of the guitar, and also different type of fret material. The fret is this small metal piece here, which role is to divide the fretboard into individual notes. If I play an individual fret, it will sound different, because each division is an individual note. Now, moving on to the body of the guitar. The body of the electric guitar is much more complex than the one of the acoustic guitar. First of all, we have the pickups, or the magnets, which are one of the main components of the electric guitar. The job of the pickups is to grab the signal made by the vibration of the string and to turn it into electrical current. That signal, then, is caught by the jack here, and this is the jack hole when the jack is inserted, and it's transmitted up to the amp, to the FX unit, and then it's transmitted up to the speaker. And then you hear the overdrive of the guitar, you hear the different tones of the guitar. Now, this is the bridge of the guitar. This is one of the most delicate parts. In a Fender Stratocaster type guitar, this, we have a tremolo bridge. A tremolo bridge is like any standard bridge, but it has an extra function. And its extra function is that by pulling it up or down, you get a pitch change in the guitar. There are three different types of bridges. There is a fixed bridge, which is only made of a piece of metal, like it would be, uh, for example, an acoustic guitar and different holes in the body. A tremolo system, like the one that I have here, and a Floyd Ross system. The Floyd Ross system is much more present in heavy metal and rock guitars. And its job is the same as the tremolo, but it's like a more evolved version of it. For example, you can do much more extreme lifting with a Floyd Ross bridge. Now, moving on to the pickup selector. On a Fender Stratocaster guitar, you have five different positions. For each position of the pickup selector, you select different magnets. For example, this is the bridge position, meaning that the bridge pickup is activated. This is the neck position, meaning that the neck pickup, the one here closer to the neck, is activated. The middle positions have different settings depending on how you want to wire them. For example, the middle one activates the middle here, this position here activates these two magnets, and this position here, which is closer to the bridge, activates these other two. Now let's test out the difference in tone that they make. The bridge pickup. Now, same thing, but with the neck pickup. It's very different, right? Now, moving on to the controls. There is a volume control. This raises and lowers the volume of the electric guitar. To be really honest, this actually alters the gain and not the volume of the guitar, but we're gonna talk about that later on in a specific model which is only about tone. Now, since I mentioned tone, these are the tone controls. What tone does is alters the frequencies of what you play on the guitar, meaning that by lowering the tone, you get a different sound. The lower the tone is, the muddier is the sound. The higher the tone is, the brighter is the sound. After learning the different parts of the guitar, let's have a look at the names of the string. A string is named after the note that it is tuned in. Now, let's learn them first by heart, then in the next module I'm going to get into more details in why the guitar is tuned that way. So, going from top to bottom, or 
from the second string to the third string. E, 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 G, B, e. Okay, now I'll do it slow. E, A, D, G, B, E. Now, what I want you to do at this stage is to just play the strings and after you play the strings to just say their name out loud so you can memorize its name but you can also memorize how it sounds so for example you just play the E string and say E A D G B and E and backwards E B G D A and E now that we know the names of the strings, we are going to learn how to tune each individual string. Tuning your guitar is a very important process. At this stage of your growing as a guitar player, we're going to learn to tune using an electronic tuner. You can do the same with any electronic tuner on any analog tuner. Now, to tune the guitar, meaning to have the guitar in pitch, which means that the note of the string should be the note of the name of the string. So this should be the E, this should be the A, this should be the D, the G, the B and the E. Now we are going to tune the guitar using an electronic tuner. As you can see in the image above, this is the tuner that I'm using in this occasion. Each tuner is actually very similar. It's usually a graph that has two sides. Left means that it is flat, which means that the note is lower than it should be. The right means that it is sharp, which means that the note is a bit higher or much higher than it should be. Now, to tune the guitar, you have to tighten or loosen the strings for the string to be in the middle. In my occasion, it should be right on the middle at the green spot. Now, in every electronic tuner or even analog tuners, you'll have the name of a string pop out while you're tuning the guitar. So, just to demonstrate how I tune my guitar, I'm going to lower the string a bit first. Now that I'm playing it, I see that the string is flat because it's red and it's a bit on the left. This means I should tighten it. In a Fender Stratocaster guitar, it means going in a counterclockwise position. Now I'm going to tighten, tighten, until I get it right here, on the green spot. On the green spot. Moving on to the other strings, the A. The A is in tune, the D is also in tune. is just a bit flat. So I'm going to tighten it. Okay. The E is in tune. Now, just to demonstrate, I'm going to down tune the E. When I down tune the E, you see that it's not a D, but it's a D sharp. The hashtag sign here there means sharp. Uh, so, what are you doing on this occasion? Being that musical notes are the same as the letters of the alphabet, it's A, B, C, D, E, F, G. So, after the D comes the E. This is a D sharp, which means it's a bit higher than the D, but it's still not an E. Now, since after the D comes the E, I know that I have to tighten it or to tune it higher to go to the E note. So what I do is tighten the string, and you see that in the tuner, the sign changes. It's not D sharp anymore, but it's E. Tune it up, tune it up, now I tune it higher than I should, so I loosen it. Okay, now it's perfectly tuned. One tip that I would give you about the electric guitar, especially if you're losing like a terminal system like I am, when you tune it once, raise the strings a bit, apply some pressure to them. If you do so, the strings might go faster in their place. Now, to check again, we'll see the guitar is a bit out of tune. So what we do is check again. A is okay. A is okay. The G is okay. The B is okay. We just have to raise the E. Now the guitar is perfectly in tune. Okay, now we finally can start playing the electric guitar. 
First of all, we're going to learn our first three open chords. Later on in the series, I'm going to tell you what a chord is, how to form a chord, and how to know what a chord is by ear or by music theory. But for the moment, we are just going to learn the positions of the chords. And we are going to learn about chords like a shape on our instrument. And the three chords chosen are E minor, A minor, D major. Okay, so for the E minor, we are going to place our middle finger in the second fret of the A string, our ring finger in the second fret of the D string. Okay, one small tip here. If you see that the chord is really hurting you, it means that perhaps you have a problem with your wrist position. Try to raise your wrist like this, so it's so the strings, sorry, so the hand is perfectly in a 90 degree position with the strings. As perfect as 90 degrees as you can get it, it doesn't have to be perfect, but in a position where it doesn't hurt so much, because in the beginning you might have some sore fingers here and your wrist might hurt a bit until it gets used to the motion. Now, what I want you to do at this point is just play the guitar with a pick. You just drum it, and regarding the pick, for the moment, you just have to know that you hold it with the thumb and your first finger like this. Or you can play with just your thumb. The importance here is just to have the strings ring out. So, second fret on the A, second fret on the D. If you see the strings make buzzing noises like or know that you are blocking the strings with the flash from your fingers that you're placing on the fretboard. One way to fix it is to raise the fingers as I told you and then to test it out if anything sounds bad or doesn't sound bad. For the A minor chord, it's the same type of fingering but what we have to do now is to lower our fingers one string below and to add our first finger, meaning that if we're in an E minor, an E minor, sorry, we just have to lower our fingers one string and place our first finger in the first fret of the B string. So, open A string, 2nd fret of the D, 2nd fret of the G, 1st fret of the B, and open E string. Now, one thing I have to mention is that usually the chords take the name of the best note, bass note, or the lower note. In the case of the E minor, take the name of the E, so we start playing from the E. In the case of the A minor, it takes the name of the A, so we start playing from the A. Moving on to the D major. This may be a bit tricky one to get at first. The D major consists of the open D, since it takes the name of the lower string. Second fret of the G, played with our first finger. Third fret of the B, played with our ring finger. And second fret of the high E, played with our middle finger. If you see that you make noises for playing it, for example, your hand is stuck, try to, as I said, raise your hand at an almost 90 degree angle. Now, one small tip that I will give you regarding playing the chords is to just strum everything very, very, very slowly. Just pick it with your right hand until you find that nothing buzzes. And hold your chord position for about 5 or 10 seconds if your hand starts to hurting and releasing it. You should do before trying to play guitar at the beginning some wrist exercises, like for example just rotating it to get enough pressure on it. And some hand exercise, hand stretching, which means opening your hand continuously for about 30 seconds and stretching the fingers a bit. This way, it's assured that your fingers won't hurt or your wrist won't hurt that much at the beginning. So, to recap, E minor, A minor, D major, now I'm going to play just something with these three chords, just so you can actually have an idea of what kind of music you can make once you learn them. There are 
are thousands of songs that you probably have heard of that contain these chords. Once you actually get them under your fingers, you're good to go to learn your first beginner songs. Now we are going to take a look at some left and right hand exercises. It's very important to build up a practice routine made of exercises and playing songs while learning guitar. At this stage, our learning routine or a practice routine is going to be only playing chords and doing some hand exercises. The first exercise I'm going to give you has nothing to do, first of all, with playing the guitar, but it's just do some hand stretches for both the left and right hand. For the left hand, you just grab your fingers, do some stretches, rotate the wrist for two or three minutes as you feel comfortable. Now, the first exercise is going to be regarding the right hand. We're going to learn the guitar by using a pick. And the way that you hold the pick is in between your thumb and your first finger. And you have to rest your hand in the bridge here, close to the bridge, while your pinky touching the pick guard. Now, what you have to do is to have this kind of motion, a downwards motion. Whenever you play a downwards motion, you rest the pick on the string close to it. I play the E, and I rest on the E. Your exercise is going to be playing each individual string 10 times. It's always a down motion. You don't have to do it fast. You just have to practice this at least for 10 minutes per day. Now, moving on to a more interesting exercise, you're going to make a left hand exercise. The exercise, first of all, consists of only placing your fingers, one finger per fret, without playing anything. So, first finger, first fret, second finger, second, and so on, until the fourth finger. This is important because this way you can start us stretching your hand. It might be a bit hard at the beginning and your wrist start, might start to hurt. But remember, if you s seem to have difficulties having your hand down while playing it, raise your wrist so it, the fingers are at almost a 90 degree angle. So what's important to do now is to place the fingers and hold the, the hand down while playing the string. If you are able to play a clean note here with your, with your pinky on the 4th fret, holding the other strings for at least 10 to 15 seconds, then you have to do this at least 5 times per day for each individual string, meaning that you hold it, you release, you move on to the next, to the A string, then release, moving on to the D. then you release. So these are the two basic exercises that I will give you up to this point. What is important now is to build up some strength in your left hand and also some dexterity in your right hand. In the next modules, we are going to see more exercises about changing chords fast and about building some dexterity in both your left and your right hand. Now that we have learned our first chords and we have done some exercises, it's time to learn our first riff. The riff you're going to learn is Smoke on the Water by Deep Purple, a very classy song with a very, very classic riff. The reason why I chose it is because it uses only two strings and one finger on the left hand. And also it's fun and entertaining to play. So let me play it first for you, then I'll explain you in detail how to do it. Okay, now to learn it. Your right hand technique is very important. You have to pick the D and the G string with your pick at the same time with a downward motion like this. Regarding the left hand, we are only going to use one finger to bar the strings. Barring the strings meaning that 
barring more than one string at one fret with only your finger. So, the first finger on your left hand is going to bar the third fret on the D and the third fret on the G string. Like this. It's going to do the same on the fifth fret of the D and the fifth fret of the G. Like this. Always you have to play both strings, D and G, and bar them. So I'm going to refer to different numbers referring to different frets. For example, I'm going to say third fret, I mean one, two, three, third fret in both the D and the G string. When I say fifth fret, one, two, three, four, five, fifth fret on both the D and the G. So it starts out with an open D and G. Then the first fret D, sorry, the third fret D and G. Then the fifth fret D and G. So. Zero, three, five. Okay, the second part of the riff is the same as the first part. Zero, three. But now we're not going directly to the five. But we go six five, so it's zero three six five, still barring the D and the G. Once again, zero three six five. Okay, connecting the two parts and play them very slowly. Zero three five. Zero three six five. Once again, slower. Zero, three, five. Zero, three, six, five. The last part is almost the same as the two other parts. So it's zero, three. Okay, so one way to learn and to memorize this is to actually say out the number of the fret while you're playing the song. Meaning that I'll play the song very, very slowly for you while saying out loud the numbers. So it's zero, three, five, zero, three, six, five, zero. Once again, zero, three, five, zero, three, six, five, zero, three, five, three, zero. Okay, so I would advise you now for your practice routine to make the exercises that I gave you before, the exercises on the hand, the left one and the right one, but also to practice the strip for about 10 or 15 minutes per day. It's gonna be very fun when you'll be able to learn it properly and when we're gonna add some distortion to it. It's gonna sound exactly as a sound. To begin our second module, I want to talk about... To begin our second module of beginner electric guitar, I want to talk to you about intervals, what they are and how learning them in the future can be useful to you. Now, musicians of all types talk in music theory, talk in numbers. When I say numbers, you, for example, may overhear some sax players, piano player or guitar players talk about a second, a third, a major fourth, a fifth. What they are referring to is an interval. An interval is a distance between two notes. The bigger the difference, the bigger the interval. The smaller the difference, the smaller the interval. For example, if I play here the third fret and the fifth fret, and if I play the third fret and the eleventh fret, you can hear there's a difference in how it sounds. The difference is because the note in the third fret, the G, is closer to the A. And the note in the third fret, the G, is closer to the A than it is to the E flat here. So, what I want you to memorize is that an interval is a space between two notes, 
and intervals will be useful to you because by learning them and by learning the distance between two nouns and kind of memorizing it, you will improve your ear and will learn how to communicate better with other instrumentists. Because not every instrumentist has frets. Piano players don't have frets. Sex players don't have frets. So the way that you communicate with them is through intervals. Okay then, we know the names of the strings. Now we will learn the notes of the fretboard. They're very easy to learn, since there are only 12 notes that are repeated through the whole fretboard. The notes are A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and also notes in between that are sharps and are flats. <laughs> Let me get my into the detail on this. So, what you have to remember is that the difference between two notes is a semitone or a half tone. Okay. Each individual fret is a semitone of difference, meaning that the first fret is a semitone different from the second, a semitone different from the third, a semitone different from the fourth. So each fret is a semitone. Now, notes, for example, A, B, are one tone apart. One tone consists of two semitones. So, for example, the A and the B are two semitones apart, meaning there are two frets apart. The only notes that are a semitone apart are the B to the C, it's a semitone apart, and the E to the F. So, how you remember it is not by remembering each individual distance between notes, but only remember that B, C, and E, F are a semitone apart meaning that only the B and the C and the E and the F are on one fret apart. Now, to make it practical. Okay, so, we know this is an E, right? But what's the first note, the first fret? Now, the E and the F we know are a semitone apart, meaning that they are one fret apart. So, the first fret, it's an F. F, after F, a, B, C, D, E, F, G, comes the G. The F and the G, we know that are not a semitone apart, so are a tone apart, meaning that a tone means two frets. So it's F, first fret, two, three. The third fret is a G note. After the G comes the A, A B, C, D, E, F, G. Okay, so the G and the A, we know are a tone apart, meaning two semitones, meaning two frets apart. So it's G, three, four, five. This is the A note. But what's in between? So, to make this very easy for you, if the first fret is an F and the third fret is a G, in between it's what we are called either flat or either sharp. So it can be an F sharp, which means raised from the F, or a G flat, which means lower than the G. The fourth fret, we know that the G is on the third fret here. So the fourth fret is either a G sharp or A flat. The same principle applies to all the fretboard. I would advise you to first of all learn the notes in the first five frets in all strings. So now to help you out with the second string. The first string, it's an A. We know after the A comes the B, which is one tone apart, means two semitones, means two frets. So, after the A, one, two, comes the B. In between, the first fret is either an A sharp or a B flat. Now, after the B comes the C. The B and the C are one semitone apart, meaning only one fret apart. So, after the B, third fret is C. For the D, G, B and E, is the same logic applied to all of them. But let's, for example, want to find out what note is the fifth fret of the B string. How we do it is like we start from the beginning. First is an open B. After the B comes the C. We know that the B and the C are half a step apart, one semitone or one fret. So the first fret is a C note. So after the C note, moving on higher, a, B, C, D. So C, D, one tone, two frets. This is a D note. 
After the D note comes the E. We know that D and E are one tone apart, so two frets. So, ultimately, the fifth fret of the B string, it's an E note. And what's interesting is that the high string is an E note and the fifth fret is an E note. So if I play them at the same time, yeah, they will sound the same. And this is actually one of the ways to tune the guitar, but we're going to talk about that in a later module. Now, how I wanted to exercise it is to randomly just pick a fret, for example, 11th fret of the G. And then start out from the beginning, naming all the notes up to the 11th fret. So we have G, A, B, C, D, E. After the E comes the F, which is just one semitone away, so one fret. After the F comes the G, but in between the F and the G, there's an F sharp. So we know that the 11th fret of the B, it's an F sharp. Basically, just remember that B to C and E to F are one fret apart. All the other notes are two frets apart. Try to do this exercise every day, and you will see that eventually you will memorize all the notes in the fretboard. It won't happen in some weeks, or it won't happen in a month. But when you play guitar for some time, it will become just from memory and from muscle memory to know, for example, that the E is here, the E is here, it's also here, it's also here, it's also here, here, and here. So the same note is repeated the guitar in each individual string. And one other thing to remember is that after the 12th fret, nor start repeating. For example, this is an E. In the 12th fret, it's an E. Open B. 12th fret, it's still a B. So that's it about the notes on the guitar. Just try to memorize them bit by bit, but don't be too harsh on yourself if you don't remember them. Remember, it takes time and it takes practice to memorize it. Now I want to teach you a very interesting thing. I'm going to teach you how to read guitar tabs or guitar tablature. Nowadays, guitar players find guitar tablature online for perhaps every song they want to learn. So it's very important to know how to read them. Reading a guitar tab is very easy and it's way easier compared to reading music on a sheet. Guitar tabs are nothing more than a numbering system on a guitar. Each fret consists of a different number, depending on where it's located on the fretboard. So we have the first, second, third, fourth, fifth fret. Same thing applies to all the strings, up to the last one. Now, I'm going to show you up in the screen a chord tab, I'm going to show you the D major chord, and we're going to learn it from the tab. So, as you can see here on the screen, it shows you clearly that you don't have to play the E and the A, they're notated with a cross. It shows that, it shows that you have to play the open or the zero, the open string, when it's zero it's open. You have to play the second fret of the G, third fret of the D, second fret of the E. So we know it. D major. Okay, now to learn a tab of a melody, for example this one, it states clearly that you have to play the second fret, fourth fret, fifth fret, fourth fret again of the G, second fret. So this is it about guitar tablature, they're very easy to learn, but you can kind of get a bit confused when there are so many numbers there. So I would advise you to go through perhaps just some tabs and take a look at them to see how you can refer them in the guitar. It doesn't mean that you have to learn the songs right away. For example, for the chords that you have learned up until now, A minor, D major, A minor, just Google guitar tabs for the chords and learn them once again from the tab. Now let's learn three more chords. The chords we're going to take a look at are the D minor, the G major, and the D and the C major, sorry. Now that you know there are other three chords, learning these new ones it's not going to be that hard for you. But it's just a bit of more of a hand stretch. For the D minor chord, we start out in a D major position. What we do is instead of 
grabbing the second fret of the high E, we grab the first fret of the high E. And the positioning, the fingering is like this. Second fret of the G with our middle finger. Third fret of the B with our ring finger. And the first fret of the E with our first finger. You just have to play them very softly at the beginning, one by one, with your pick or with your thumb, just to make sure that nothing rings out or nothing is bad. For example, you don't get any ticks or tucks like this. And since it's a D chord, a D minor chord, we start out from the D note. Now, regarding trick here is to start from the A minor. From the A minor chord, same position, you grab your third finger, your ring finger, and place it on the third fret of the A string. So, from here, ring finger, third fret, A string. So it's third fret of the A, second fret of the D, open G, first fret of the B, and open E. Now, as said for the other chords, the chord usually takes the name of the bass note, or the lowest note. Now we know that the third fret of the A string is the note C. So C major is. Regarding the G chord, this may be a bit of stretch for you. Third fret of the low E, which we now know that is a G note, with the middle finger. Second fret of the A string played with our first finger. And the third fret of our high string played with our third finger. We can play it with our third finger or we can play it with our pinky find it hard playing it with our third finger or a ring finger. Okay, to recap, D minor. C major. G major. Okay, so I'll play you something with this three chords just to check out the type of music that you can make. Keep practicing your chord changes, and if something starts to hurt, remember, make your hand stretches and put your wrist so your fingers are almost at a 90 degree angle, while always strumming gently and making sure that everything reads out well. It's not important to change them fast yet. The importance is that when you hold on to a certain chord position, you are able to play it clean. Now we're going to do some right hand exercises and learn some picky techniques with the right hand. First of all, I want to talk about guitar picks. Uh, guitar picks can be of different sizes, different thicknesses, and also different materials. Usually they're plastic. Now I'm using one that's 1.14 millimeters, Jim Dunlop, which is a standard one, which is a medium sized and a medium thickness pick, but you can use any pick you like. My advice for this stage would be to use a thick pick, like one millimeter or something because it would help you to build up your technique once you have gotten your hand used to it you can choose between a thicker one or between a thinner one also something else that you have to remember the pick is the greatest amplifier that the guitar player has like Mark Knopfler says well you can tell if for example you're playing this with your fingers and you use your pick things instantly become louder, they become clearer and crisper, so it's kind of an amplifier. Now, regarding the right hand technique, we're going to learn what's called alternate picking. 
Alternate picking is a right hand technique which is very common in guitar in every genre. It basically means that you alternate between upstrokes and downstrokes. Now, to study up alternate picking it's a long a lifetime knowledge because guitar players are for skill and levels continuously study guitar picking, alternate picking, to do it better, to be more precise and to be faster. But the very first exercise is to rest your hand on the pick guard, like we learned in the previous lessons. Rest your pick on the E string, the low string, and then start picking. Down, up, down, up, down, up. You have to do it at least 10 times for every string, then move on to the A string. And so on, you have to move on with all your with all the strings, sorry. Now, what's important to remember is that you don't have to hold your pick tightly, or else your hand will get tired. And the motion is kind of something between the wrist and the fingers. So basically you do not move the fingers like this, but the motion is mostly with the wrist. So it's So what I mean about that your whole hand is moving at these times. At this point you might not tell the difference between moving your fingers and moving your wrist, but don't worry too much about it. So this is the first exercise with the right hand, just the open strings. Now to give you another exercise for the right hand, I want to combine the one we did with the left hand with the one for the right hand. So remember that we put four fingers in this position in the first exercise. What I want to do now is to play the four fingers, meaning that. So the first hit, it's a downstroke. Second hit, upstroke. Third hit, downstroke. Fourth hit, upstroke. So it's. If you can't do it at the first position, I advise you to move on to the fifth position because the frets are smaller and you'll get used to it better. Then move on to the next string. Remember the motion, it's always down, up, down, up, down, up. At other stages, it doesn't have to be down, up. For example, you can start with an up stroke, which I usually do in my playing. And also do this exercise at a faster BPM. And just out of curiosity, this exercise that I give you now is something that I do like a warm up exercise and a practice routine every day for about 10 years now. So, this is it for the lessons. Just keep in mind to practice the alternate picking exercise for at least 10 minutes and another 2 or 3 minutes this other exercise without letting your hand hurt now I want to give you an exercise with the left hand that will help you build up strength it's very easy and basic and I suggest you to do it just as a warm up before you do your practice routine or study your songs or play for fun I would suggest to do it just for 1 or 2 minutes since it's a bit tiring on the left hand so the exercise would be on the third string, sorry, on the G string, on the fifth fret, you have to put your first finger. Then you have to stretch all four fingers. So the first finger is on the fifth fret, and the little finger is on the eighth fret. Now, what you have to do is, without picking with your out hand, you have to pull off the string. This is called a pull off. So it's first you hammer on, then you pull off. A hammer on is when without picking the string you hammer on to it. So it's this hammer on. A pull off is when you pull off. You do a downward motion on the string. So it's kind of like pulling it literally and then releasing it. Hammer-ons are easier, so you just hammer, but down, pull-offs are a bit trickier, so it's release, 
and you have to try to not alter the pitch of the note. So the exercise would be just doing this for 10 straight seconds. First and third finger. First finger. Try to do it just as a basic warm up before your study routine and don't hurt yourself too much while doing because it gets trickier the more you do it. Okay, now let's move on to learning another song. The song that I'm going to learn is the opening riff for Nirvana, Come As You Are. I'll play it first for you, then I'll teach you. It's very easy, probably you have heard it, and if you don't, I suggest you to check out the song, it's awesome. Now, the reason why I want to teach you this riff and its particular song is because first of all it's very easy and second it combines alternate picking with some easy left hand stretches. We are only using two fingers, the first and the second finger, a pick and only two strings, the E and the A string. Now, without further ado, first of all you start out with two strokes on the E string. It's down, so it's then is the fourth fret of the A string, then is the second fret of the A string. The first fret is played with the first finger, second fret with the second finger. So it's zero, zero, one, two. Then you have to move on to the A string and you have to play this motion. So it's open A string, second fret of the of the low E, and open A string. So up until now we have. I'll play it once again slow, and I'll say out loud the names of the frets. Zero, zero, one, two, zero, two, zero. Now the next part is very easy. So it's two strokes on the second fret of the low E. First fret, open E, then second fret of the a string and then two hits on the low E. Now this might seem a bit complex to you, but I'll play it slow and you try to keep up with my slow playing. So it's Now I'm gonna play the whole riff slowly for you. To start off repeating the riff, meaning starting off from, from the beginning, you have to play the stick here. So it's second fret of the A, open E, first fret of the E, second fret of the E, once again slowly. Only the first time the riff starts out with two open E's. The other times, meaning every repetition, it starts out with second fret of the A, open E, and then first and second fret. Now, if you want to name the notes, that would be another good exercise for you. Meaning that, for example, when you say zero, zero, one, two, you can say 
E, 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 F sharp. A little food to you a lot to actually memorize the notes that you are playing. My advice for this exercise would be, since it's mostly difficult for the right hand, to try out an alternate pick. All the different notes, so it's... And when you pass on to the A string, my advice would be to do an upstroke, so it's... So it's upstroke on the A, downstroke on the E. Upstroke on the A, downstroke on the E. Hope you have fun practicing it. And I hope that you have learned the first reach with was smoke on the water. Have mastered it a bit, and now you insert this other riff in your practice routine. Now that we have learned some chords, a couple of songs, and some exercises, it's time to move on to scales. You have heard guitar players, sax players, piano players, everyone talk about scales. And scales are the most familiar thing among musicians which they practice the whole time. But what is a scale? A scale is basically a series of notes which are a half step or a step apart or a tone or a semitone. You just have to memorize it like this at this stage and we're gonna have a different module on this beginner course which talks about music theory but later on. Now what I want you to memorize right now is the formula of the G major scale which is the scale which we're gonna base off our study and our practice routine which actually most musicians do start out with the G major or the C major scale. Now, the formula of a scale refers to how many steps and half steps are on it. The formula of the G major scale is step, step, half step, 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 half step. So there are only two half steps and the other ones are steps, meaning that two half steps, a half step is a semitone and a full step is a tone, which means two semitones. So once again, it's step, step, Half step, 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 half step. I'll play it for you. Okay, now to learn the G major scale in our first positions. The G major scale, as we said in the previous lesson, is composed of step, step, half step, 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 half step. What this means is pretty easy. Since it's a G major scale, scale, sorry, it starts off with a note G. All scales start out, take the name of the note from which they start. So, it's step, step. A whole step from the G is the A. A whole step from the A is the B. Step, step. Now we are the half step. A half step from the B is the C. Then we go another step from the C to the D, another step from the C to the E, another step from the C to the F sharp, and a half step from the F sharp to the G. So it's G, step, step, half step, 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 half step, step. I would want you to learn it on the first string, like I did on this exercise. So it's the third, fifth, seventh, eighth, want you to learn it uh, by saying out the notes. So it's G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G. Now we have learned it on one string, it's time to learn it on all the strings in different positions. The first position, the most common position of the G major scale is the one of the third position which goes downwards on the fretboard and it goes like this. Okay, so I'll put the tab and I'll spell out the different frets that we are playing. Remember that it goes on with the same note sequence. So it's third fret of the E, fifth fret of the E. Remember that we are on the second position, meaning that the hand is placed on the second fret and we are playing each string with one, sorry, each fret with one finger. So the second fret is played with the first finger, the third with the second, the fourth with the fourth, and the fifth with the fifth. So the third fret is played with our middle finger. So it's third fret, E, fifth fret of the E, then second fret 
of the A, third fret of the A, fifth fret of the A, then it's second fret of the D, fourth fret of the D, and the fifth fret of the D. Here is the G, and here is the C. So this is where the scale repetition ends. Now, I'll spell out the notes while playing. So it's G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, and G. Notice that I played each, each fret with its own finger. And also, notice that the notes are the same, and the division, meaning that the formula, the step and the half steps are the same. What I want you to do as an exercise in this point is only play it up until here. The scale repeats itself. So it goes. But we will learn this in an additional lesson. Okay, now we're going to learn a melody on the G major scale. There are tons of melodies on the G major scale. We're going to learn a basic one right now, then we're going to learn the riff based on it and the song based on it on the end of this module. So we're going to learn the melody of Wish You Were Here by Pink Floyd. The melody is straightforward, the melody of the guitar, and it goes like this. This is on the G major because all the notes are notes of the G major. So we have, slowly. Cool, right? Now, what we play is with the second finger, we play the third string of the high, of the low E, sorry. Then, we play the open A, and then we hammer on, like we learned in the exercise, on the second fret of the A string. So it's. And it's the same thing. On the D. So it's. Open D, then we fret the second fret of the open D. So it's. Then the second part is open G, second fret of the D, and an open D. So I'll play slowly. What I want you to pay some attention here is regarding the hammer on on the second fret of the A. You have to hammer on with your first finger, you can have some support by the second finger too, so it's something like this. Now, it might sound a bit dirty at the beginning, once you get used to the hammering on, but with time it will sound very clean, you can play it on this fret and all the other frets. To analyze the notes played on this riff, if you take them one by one, you will see that are not notes of the scale, because we play the G, A, B, D, E, then G, E, and D. So everything is perfectly on the G, G major scale. Now let's have a look at some alternate picking. We talk about alternate picking while doing some exercises before, but I want to get a bit more detail on it. Alternate picking is really not so easy to do. And guitar players tend to mostly have difficulties on their alternate picking. And you can actually tell whether it's an amateur guitar player or a professional guitar player, mostly by their cleanness and preciseness of their alternate picking. There are many ways to do it, many ways. There are many types of alternate picking, but generally it's just up, down, or down, up on the strings. Now, I gave you an exercise before, which consisted only playing the open or playing the exercise, mixing the both exercises, so one, two, three, four. Now I want to give you another exercise which goes in line with this but covers most of the fretboard. It's the same positions, so it's one, two, three, four, and it's always down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, 
but what you have to do is go across all the fretboard by raising with one fret. So basically you have to do this. Then go up, second fret, third fret, fourth fret, fifth fret, sixth fret. The important is that the motion never has to stop. Down, up, 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 down, up. You try to do this exercise like mix it up with learning some songs and do it along with the strength exercise we learned before as a practice routine. Sorry, as an intro to your practice routine, just a warm up. So for the warm up, I would suggest that you do the strength exercise for a couple of minutes, just not too much to get your hand tired. Then do this for a couple of minutes too until you do a complete a complete full cycle up until the 12th fret for all the strings. So it's up until the 12th fret, then go B, up all the strings from the 1st fret to the 12th fret. This is the exercise that I wanted to give you. It will help you with your alternate picking, also it will help you with the left hand and with the coordination with both hands. Because if you see that when you're playing guitar and you see many guitar players play sloppy, it's mostly because the coordination of the length of the right hand is not properly the level that it should be. So by doing this exercise, you gain from both the right and your left hand. Hey everyone, thanks for watching this course. If you want to watch the rest of the course, the link is down below. Not only will you get the access to this course, but you'll get access to a lot of other courses in a huge bundle. And it's on sale today. So buy before the sale ends. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in another video.